I moved here from Saskatchewan, Canada, and I have lived here for 14 years. I'm actually the baby of 10 kids, and um, the Lord brought me here, but I'm happily married to Patrick Hilger, and, and I have four children, and I know we, and everybody here, we were all familiar with the rosary, and we're all familiar with mass, and we're all familiar with the devotions, but it's all centered on Jesus Christ. It's just, when I was about Celine's age, I was about six or seven, and my mom, she had an appointment over in the church rectory and wandered around. But one day she came back and she saw me like this in front of the tabernacle. And she said, okay, Mary, I'm ready, let's go. And I wasn't responding to her. She said, come on, Mary, let's, let's go, let's, come on. I was, and you know what I said? I don't even remember this, but my mom told me. I turned around and I said, shh, I'm talking to him. <laughs> because the faith was that real for me at that point, that it was a real human being. It was a real person. He took on the form of a man, and he is our friend. And at that point, I already had that relationship with him. I had already given my life and wanted to surrender my life to him in that personal relationship. So I'm going to sing for you, Come Into My Heart. Cleanse me of my sin because when we are filled with his love, then we kind of, it's like a friendship, you know? If you're friends with somebody at school or in homeschool, whichever, but you're friends with somebody and they offend you all the time, well, it's not really that great of a friendship, right? So we want to make the effort to come and talk to Jesus every day, to apologize to him just like we would a friend and treat him like we would a friend and treat him with emotions because he did cry in the Bible. He was full of. Um, excitement to see his buddies, right? He like cried over Lazarus and raised him up. He cried over Jerusalem. He he was a real person. And so I have always had that relationship with him. So, and the last part of the song is take all that I am. Take my time. Take my technology. Take my academics. Take my reputation. Take my job. Take my, and lead me where you want me to go. As I sing this, I just want you to soak up the presence of the Lord. Absorb him as if it was a holy hour, as if we're in prayer. Come into my heart. One of my favorite memories of World Youth Day, one of my favorite memories is this concept that it's not just the churches in Fort Wayne. It's not just the churches in Indiana. It's like there's people carrying flags. And then you see these flags and you hear these languages around you and you hear the music and they're all singing. Pray for those all throughout the world who are persecuted. Let's just use this as our prayer. Let's just stand before the Lord. We are one body, one body in Christ. And we do not stand alone. It was just a weekend retreat I went on, and that just made the difference. I was just having a really hard time in my life. I, don't, I just felt completely unworthy, like there's something more I needed to do in order to win Christ's love. And I'd actually been uh, c confessing with a priest every month, and he's, he, he was trying to help me through all the counseling and things, and he said, okay, you, he gave me this this hypothetical situation, and he said, y you go to heaven, you die, you go to heaven, you meet Jesus, what do you think he'll say? And at that point, I busted into tears, and I sobbed uncontrollably, and I said, I think he'll tell me, I think he'll just walk away, I don't even think he wants to see me. That's how, how much I judged myself. And, um, I, I just want to encourage you, now in this dark moment, the Adoration Chapel was starting in my parish, and I decided we had different, um, it was like it's supposed to be a 24 hour a day, seven day a week Adoration Chapel, but we didn't have enough, so we decided we'll go Monday to Friday. I was in charge of Mondays. We had captain for captains for every day. So um, it basically, if somebody couldn't make it, then they would call their captain and say, they'd rather call a substitute, or they would call their captain and say, I couldn't make it. It was summer holidays and five people couldn't make it and I just got tired of trying to find substitutes and I went, you know what, I, my day is free. I prayed five hours in front of the Blessed Sacrament and as dark and as depressed and as judgmental as I was on myself, as difficult as it was, I have never been happier. I don't remember, and that is spiritual joy. 
I, I just don't remember a time when I have been happier. This is the unconditional love. So around this time, I also called um, my priest. I had gone for, uh, um, gone for a meeting with my parish priest, and he was like, Mary, you're stressed out. Get, get out of town. Like, go on a retreat or something like that. And I'm like, well, I don't know. I think I'd like to go this weekend. So I called my friend from um, two hours away in the big city, and I said, um, well, what are you doing this weekend? And she said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm gone. You, you know, I do go to work. If you wanted to come um, for the weekend, it wouldn't work. Um, I said, okay, well, that's fine. Well, what are you doing? She said, I'm going on a retreat. <laughs> said, I'm coming with you. And this was the retreat where that unconditional love of God just poured over me. There was nothing I did. There was nothing I said. I just praised the Lord. And I was just open to whatever he had for me. And that was just the first time in my life I felt free to to just love him and and I just the judgment stopped I didn't I'm gonna say this one more time and I just want you to repeat um, come along just open up your hearts completely to what the Lord wants and how he wants to change your day and how he wants to change your life because you just said yes